It's funny, I was on YouTube the other day and a, a, a recommended video pops up and it's you on a reality TV show. Oh, yeah. From, I mean, when was that? That was 11 and a half years ago. I was 23. What's, what's the story behind that? There is no story. And I never really got famous from it because you have to understand, I was on a reality show before Instagram existed. What was it called? Before, the the Shipwreck. Shipwreck, yeah. Shipwreck. It was a popular British television show. And I didn't do it for fame and I didn't do it for clout or money. I was I was Z-list famous in the UK for about four months after that show aired. Mm. Then it disappeared. But I was for a time recognized in the streets, etc. cetera. Um, I only did it because, and this is going to sound hilarious now, I think it's the first time I've ever said this. They said, yeah, it's this tropical island and you go there and you're on this tropical island for two months, three months. And I just remember thinking, oh, this is an experience I probably won't ever be rich enough to replicate. So mm -hmm. like, which is ironic now. So next year, I'll probably, well, give me a year or two. I'll be I'll have the, enough money to buy an island. But um, yeah, I just thought this is going to be a unique experience. Let me try that. So it wasn't a very exciting experience. Every one hour episode you watch is five days condensed into a 45 minute episode. So it was like being in a beautiful, sunny prison. But I, it was, it's very interesting now that people are sending me clips from it because I'm exactly, you could tell the kid in the show is a future multimillionaire. Mm. No one knows how to make the fire. I'm like, give me the things. Oh, but you don't know what you're doing, Tristan. I said, the box says fire on it. So inside this box are things to make a fire. I'm going to work it out. Leave me alone. You're arrogant. Just, just leave me alone. Half an hour later, there's a roaring fire going. You, like, you, you're the only person actually being productive and getting yeah. it done in it. Oh, we got rained on. I'll build a waterproof shelter. Well, you don't know how to build. Just just leave me alone. And I built waterproof houses. Not just for me, then for everyone. So like you could tell that the kid in the on the reality show is a future multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. So it's very cool now being in my position. Being set, I don't actually watch it back because you know I know everything that happens. I watched them all those years ago. But being sent clips... From from back then, it's it's very cool to see, and it's very interesting to see. The mindset was always there. Was it was there anything you learned from that experience? Not really. I mean, <laughs> I, I found it honestly is incredibly easy. Mm -hmm. I found it incredibly easy. The diet was hard because we didn't have an, enough food to eat. But oh, I learned how to kill pigs and slaughter mm -hmm. animals. They they taught me how to do that before I did it for the show because you know, it has to be done humanely. Um, that was a cool experience. What did I actually learn? What did I learn? Um, did, did it give you any confidence being on camera or did you not even realize the cameras were there? Not really. No. You, you get used to, after the first three days, you stop realizing that the camera's around. Mm -hmm. So, now, And I was always a quite confident guy anyway. And, and still at the time, even up till five years, five years before that show was even filmed, I'd been fighting professionally. So I'd been in the ring and, you know, in, in arenas and, and stuff in front of hundreds of people getting beaten up sometimes. So like I was never shy at all, but I, I didn't really learn anything. I'll be honest. I just mm. I, I I learned how fickle and how stupid fans and and haters can be. I guess that was my first experience of people on the internet, you know, sending you stupid messages and you know internet hate. But well, this is when you came off the show. Yeah, when I came off the show, that was my first experience of internet hate. I remember I was at a club in St Albans, and some guys came up to me, some guys who I could have crushed like with my bare hands. Hey man, hey man, can we take a picture of you? Yeah, sure. I took a picture with them. Yeah, see you later, guys. The next day, someone sends me a clip, uh, the the same picture on Twitter, with these guys these guys saying, "Hey, I ran into Tristan from Shipwrecked." LOL. Told him he was. A mm. I was like, <laughs> "No, you didn't though. You were like super terrified and like humbled to meet me. Why? Why would you even write that?" Mm. So I guess that was one experience that stuck out. Your first taste of what people on the internet can actually be like. That's why when they've been coming for me the last six, seven, eight years, like I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can handle it. It doesn't bother me. I think it's impressive how. You've both handled it, particularly like at the peak of the storm. Yeah. When there was a cancellation and everybody was just particularly I imagine Andrew was getting yes. a lot more of it. I'm impressed that he just didn't even seem to let it phase him and just continued to do what he'd been doing before. You know what? It didn't phase him. The life me and Andrew have lived and all that we've ever been through, people typing mean words at me does not phase me. And it did not phase him at all. 